Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through next question. So this question belongs to Gate CSE 2006, guys. Okay. So the question is: Consider the following C program fragment in which i, j, and n are integers. Okay. So they gave a for loop. Okay. So let val of j denotes the value stored in the variable j after termination of the loop. Which of the following is true? Okay. So here they are asking in terms of complexity or the value, right? Okay. So let us. Uh, try to solve this question okay so first of all let us take an example for n guys okay so n is stored in i and it is being divided by 2 right okay so let me take a 2 divisible value because that will reduce our confusions right so what shall we take so let shall we take 8 guys i think 8 will be a good option right yes so rather than 4 4 will be really low right yes okay so let us start analyzing it okay Yes. So the value of n is equals to 8 and every one is an integer. Remember that also. Okay. Yes. So the value of i is equals to n. So the value of 8 is initialized to i. Okay. So and the initial value of j is a 0. Okay. So now the initialization part is done. Okay. So now we will be checking the condition. Is 8 greater than 0? True. I will be writing in this way, guys. guys true. Okay, so now you will execute whatever is inside, but there is nothing inside because it is ending with semicolon. There is nothing inside. Okay, yes. So after this, you are doing i is equals to i by 2. Okay, so you are doing 8 by 2. What will be the result? It will be 4. Okay, and we have updated the i to 4, right? Okay, so let me cut it off. So I will be writing here, guys. So i equal to 8. So i updated it to 4. And now what I am doing after that, I am doing j is equals to j plus i. Okay, so j is equals to j plus 0 plus 8. Okay, so what will be the value? It will be 8, right? Yes. Okay, so now again I will check the condition. There is no need of any initialization, right? Yes, so now again I will check the condition. Is 4 greater than 0? True. i is equals to i by 2. So now the result will be 2. Okay, again I will do j is equals to. Okay, so I need to update this value, right? So, yes. So j is equals to j plus i. So this value is with respect to i guys. Okay. So i. So 8. Okay. So just to give me a second. I think I did a silly mistake here. Yes. I did a silly mistake. So what I should add here guys. So when it told j is equals to j plus i. So let me solve it again guys. Because I am not satisfied with this explanation. Okay. So the initial value of n equal to 8. Okay. So let us assume the value of i is equals to 8. The value of j is equals to 0. So according to our question, right? Yes. So let us continue. So after this, you are checking whether i is greater than 0. Yes. So 8 is greater than 0. True. Means you are doing i is equals to i by 2. So this value is updated to 4. Okay. So then what we are doing? You are doing j is equals to j plus i. So 0 plus 4. What we will get? We will get 4. Okay. So the first time you have executed it. So again, you will check the condition. Is 4 greater than 0? Yes. Means again, you are dividing this by 2. Nice. So once you divide it by 2, you are again adding these two. So previously existing j value. So remember guys, j plus equal to i means it is indirectly j is equal to j plus i guys. It is a shorthand notation. They call it. Okay. Yes. So you are doing j plus i. So now this result will be 6. Right. Yes. So again, you are checking the condition. Is it 2 greater than 0? Yes. So you are dividing it by 1. Okay. Okay. Yes. So you divided it. Okay. So you divided it by 2. So after dividing it, you got j plus equal to i. So means you are adding 6 plus 1. The result is 7. Okay. So after that, again, you are dividing it by 2. Okay. So as this is an integer value. Okay. So if you divide 1 by 2, what you will get? You will get 0.5. So what is the integer value of 0 0.5? It is a 0. So this value will become 0. And 0 plus 7 is also 7. Okay. Again, you will check is 0 greater than 0. Now the result is a false and you will terminate outside. So the value will be 7. Okay. So for n equal to 8, we got j equal to 7. All right. So what we are searching in search of j. So let us now compare with the options. So remember guys, so whenever you are trying in terms of complexity type of problems, always try to find approx values guys. So you will not have options exact values. So option A. So log base 2 of n, 8. So that is nothing but log base 2 of 8. So it is nothing but 2 power 3. So the result will be 3. So is it 3 approx to 7? No. Okay. Similarly root 8. So this is also something 3 points. So this is also wrong. So is 7 appropriate to 8 guys? I think option C has a chance and n log n. So 8 into 3. 
okay that will be really long so this is also wrong so basically option c could be the correct answer guys i think so so just let me cross check it yes guys okay so c is the correct answer so just with a simple explanation with a simple example of n equal to 8 we got n equal to 7 j equal to 7 so if you take 128 you will get 127 so in this way always the relation will be minus 1 guys got it yes so approximately if it is a theta of n minus 1 so what will be the value guys if it is a constant it will be theta of n so in that way we got the answer got it yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea right exactly how we are solving it okay so in the next lecture let us go through the next question guys for these kind of problems you can find the theoretical step by step also like based on these values they will uh, start uh, without assuming n value they can solve but those kind of things will take time and uh, i don't prefer those type of solutions guys okay yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea so in the next lecture let us continue with the next question thank you thanks for watching like share and subscribe for more awesome videos like this thank you